the heart of Calvary Assembly of God is dedicated to seeing individuals and families grow in their relationship with Christ and discover their purpose in Him. We are also committed to seeing the church break out of its comfort zone and be a reflection of the love of God to hurting, lost, and the broken. It is our prayer that you experience the life-changing presence of the living God. Jesus. Amen. 2015, it's here. Amen. Back to the future. That's the year that they went to the future, 2015. Amen. Hallelujah. We're here already. Where did it go? Amen. So much say amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Some of you... Some of you, we're only 15. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Can we pray? Hallelujah. Father, we do love you and we thank you, Father. I thank you for the faithfulness of your people, Lord. We want to start off the new year right by being in your house. Uh, it's rain. Somebody needed it. We thank you for the rain. Uh, Holy Spirit, we invite you here to do a good work of faith on us, Lord God. And, and I just pray, Father, that your sheep hear your voice. Uh, Father, uh, that I pray, Father, that all of us receive from you. For I believe it was our destiny to be here today, uh, Father, for your word says that all of our days are scheduled. Uh, and so there is something that you want to say uh, to your people, to your sheep, Father God. And, and I pray if there's somebody here... Lord, who doesn't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, I pray, Father, you'll touch their heart, uh, Father God, and draw them close to your wounded side, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Goodbye. 2014. I don't know where it went. In fact, I don't know where all these years went since 1995 when I started this church. It's gone that quick. Amen. That's just the way life is. Amen. But I just want you to understand is, is that if we don't get our priorities right, 2015 is going to be gone. Amen? Amen. How many of you want to grow in 2015? I, I, good. Praise the Lord. I just want you to listen to the message that I believe that the, the Lord is, uh, has given to me. And, and that if we're not careful, 2016 is going to be upon us. And like 2014, where maybe we have failed the Lord, or maybe we have not grown in the Lord the way that we, we should have, 2015 is going to be the same. But we have to purpose right now, amen, that like 2014 slipped away, we've got to ask ourselves about 2015, amen, are we going to make some spiritual resolutions in our life that's going to grow us. Amen. And only you can do that. And you do that right now where you're at in your seat. What is it that you want from the Lord? Amen. Amen. Because everybody makes New Year eh, resolutions and, and they all want a fresh start. Amen. And that's the good thing about uh, serving the Lord. Every day he gives us a new day. Amen. But people like fresh starts. And so in the world, they make New Year's resolutions. Amen. And, and these resolutions are, are lose weight, quit drinking, quit smoking. And those are all good, healthy things for us to do. Uh, find a new job, pay off our debts, you know, go to school. I mean, these are just good resolutions for people to make. But those are great for the physical man. Amen? Those are good. But what about the spiritual man? Come on. How about a fresh start in our Christian walk in 2015? I'm just asking you. Is that what you want? Amen? Because I want to talk about the things. What should be our number one resolution if we want to grow spiritually in 2015? If we genuinely want a fresh start with God then there's a scripture verse that's going to help us get started uh, in 2015 in the very first Sunday uh, of, the, of the year. If we understand this scripture verse and where I'm going for the next couple of weeks, this is going to help us grow in 2015. But see, you have to say to yourself right now that I need some change in my life. And you need to purpose in your heart because change doesn't come easy. 
we hold on to a lot of things. And I say that because I've held on to a lot of things, and here I am, you know, almost 65 years old now, and lo and behold, i still got some things that I'm dealing with. But over the past couple of years, I've learned to let them go. And I just want to encourage you to do that if you really want to grow. But the Word of God says, and this is Jesus that's speaking, amen? He said, therefore I tell you, and he tells us this, guys, do not worry about your life or what you're going to eat or drink. Don't worry about that in 2015 or about your body and what you will wear. Is life not more important than food and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Boy, this guy's really eating here, amen? But do you understand it's the Father who's going to take care of us. And he says, are you not much more, much more valuable than they are? And I want you to understand, you may not think much of yourself today, but I want you to understand that you are much more valuable to God than those animals that it takes care of. Now let's go back to verse 28. And why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow? They do not labor or spend, and yet I tell you that, that not even Solomon, King David's son, in all his splendor, was dressed like one of those. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow, is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? We have to learn to trust God in our walk with him. Verse 20, uh, 31. So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what job shall we have, or what shall we wear, for the pagans run after these things. Now listen, do you not understand that the world does this? This is what the world does. All right? And your heavenly Father knows. He knows what you have need of. He knows you need these things. Watch verse 33. But seek First, his kingdom and his righteousness. And all those things, all those things, clothes, shoes, food, jobs, all of those things will be given to you. Now the King James Bible uses the word will be added unto you. And that word means increase. Amen. God knows how to take care of us. So we don't need to give to God to get. I don't need to ask you to give a dollar so that God can give you three dollars. Amen? And we should not be suing objects that will be given or added to us. I'm going somewhere with this. It is part of the plan of God to give us, add to us, if we first seek the kingdom of God. If we seek the kingdom of God and have a kingdom mind mentality, God will take care of us. But we must have a, an attitude of first seeking the kingdom of God. Matthew says, as you go, this is Jesus talking, preach this message. This is the message right here. Not the prosperity message, but preach this message. The kingdom of God is near or here. That's the message. Not that God wants to give you three cars for a four-car garage. No, that's not the message. But this is what Jesus told the church. Preach this message. He's saying this message. Why this message? Because he knows there's going to be other messages. But he wants us to preach this message. The kingdom of God is near. It's here. Heal the sick. Lay hands on the sick. If there be any sick among you, call for the elders of the church. Anoint their head with oil. Amen. Well, I don't believe that's for today. That's why we don't have healing in the church. But Jesus said, preach the message, heal the sick, raise the dead, which would scare the daylights out of us. <laughs> but you know, in the second century, when you read the uh, early church fathers, they were laying hands on the dead, and they were even being raised back then. 
Drive out the demons. Why well, don't believe in demons? Jesus did. He talked to them. When he went into one particular city, <laughs> the demon spoke to him and said, Have you come before the time to torment us? It's not yet that time. They know there's a time coming. They know that this whole life is scheduled, and they know it. Have you come before the time to torment us? Huh? We're the only one that doesn't realize that our lives are planned out by God. Amen? Now, I don't know what these evangelists are going to do with verse 9. Do not take along any gold or silver or copper in your belts. Take no bag, no suitcase for clothes for the journey or sandals or staff for the, for the worker is worth his keep. Those who work for the kingdom are worthy to be cared for. And God's going to take care of us. If we seek first in 2015 the kingdom of God. He's going to add to us if <laughs> we see the number one priority for us is to seek the kingdom. Amen? Are you with me? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I like that strong comeback. Amen. Man, that may make me preach longer. Nah. <laughs> Today, in the next few weeks, I, I want us to, to seek the kingdom. But I want us to understand the kingdom. And I'm not going to be able to get into it about the kingdom all this week. But I, I want us to understand some things about a kingdom. Because we are citizens of the kingdom. And we don't do enough preaching about the kingdom. And I want to talk about the kingdom. And I want us to understand about the kingdom. Amen. I want you to understand that there are kingdom principles. And we're not to violate the kingdom principles. Amen. And we're not to violate the kingdom priorities. Because there are priorities in the kingdom. First your brother. Then your gift. That's the priority in the kingdom. If you were a kingdom citizen. It doesn't matter that that brother's offended you. You will abide by the obedience of the word of God that says first your brother then your gift and there are kingdom promises and we want all these promises but if you don't if you violate one of the kingdom principles you're not going to be able to receive the promise of God we want to talk about that and then there are kingdom positions amen you have to be positioned for you to be able to receive the, uh, the promises of God you can't accept salvation unless you position yourself at the foot of the cross it doesn't matter what man says amen Amen? It doesn't matter. That's just the way the kingdom is, is, is written by God and spoken to us. There were just kingdom principles and priorities and promises and, and positions. And, and we need to know them so that we can be good citizens. Amen. Today I want us to understand a little, just a little, about the kingdom. Amen? Amen? To get into the kingdom, listen, there is only one way. You can't work yourself into this kingdom. You may be a good person, but you cannot work yourself into the kingdom. Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of the water, which is of his mother's womb, and of the spirit, he cannot, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. You can only get in there one way, and that's confession of the Lord Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. So the question is, are we seeking the kingdom of God? And I don't know that about all of you. You know, when I was young, I was a lot of interested in a lot of things. I was interested in flying and went and got my private pilot's license. And I was doing all kind of little toy things and playing, flying helicopters and, and all kind of things. And my priority wasn't where it should have been. But that's because nobody preached this to me. Amen? They didn't preach that the kingdom of God needs to be a priority in my life. Huh? How do I know I'm honestly seeking the kingdom of God? Well, here are a few signs. You just judge for yourself. What is your primary energy focused on? Huh? Is it temporal or eternal things? The Bible says, If ye have been risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Set your affection on these things above, not on things on this earth. And you know we're being Lord every day. Come on. 
to do temporal things every day. They try to draw us away. They try to draw us away from being active in the house of God when God says honor the Sabbath. They have things and activities for us to do on Sunday. Come on, I'm being honest. I'm trying to help everybody here. You know, we expect the, the enemy to come in full force and show his teeth and growl at us and we know he's there so we can fight him. But he doesn't do that. He knows how to win us and, and deal with us on an individual basis and, and he comes at us in, in what is our weakness. Amen? And our hearts should be on eternal things, on your mansion in the sky. Amen? On winning souls to the kingdom of God and you'll see that here in a minute. Amen? Uh, there's a change of values since you got saved. Have your values changed? Life matters. These little babies matter. Family values matter. Ethics matter. It doesn't matter if the culture changes. Oh, we got to change with it. No, it doesn't. The principles of God's kingdom never change. I'm a God that changes not. It doesn't matter what the party platform is. Huh? If it's in violation with the scriptures, if it's in violation with the kingdom, you need to pray about who you should vote for. The kingdom of God principles do not change. What matters to the king should matter to you. Huh? You say, well, what matters to Jesus? <laughs> Souls. I'm so thankful that somebody witnessed to me back in Millington, Tennessee, in 1972. He told me about Jesus. And I finally went to church with him. And I thought they were a little bit off there at first. <laughs> I said, wow, what's wrong with these guys, man? But then the Lord began to speak to my heart. So these are people who love me. And I finally gave my heart to the Lord. Amen. The Bible says the Lord is not willing that any should perish. Do you understand what that means? That means your neighbors. That means the unsaved. That means your boss. He's not willing. He's not willing. That's the will of God. He's not willing. I don't want anybody. The Muslims... The Indians said, nobody. I don't want anybody to perish, God says. But they all should come to repentance. A turnaround in their life. Change the way they are. Change their thinking. Change their heart. So what matters to king should matter to us. You say, well, how do I know if I see the value of this kingdom? And, and that really is why we ought to preach about the kingdom. We ought to see the value of being kingdom citizens in the kingdom. Well, how do I know if I see the value of the kingdom? Well, are you willing to make a sacrifice for the kingdom? Or even sell all that you have to learn or know more about it? Now, you sit here, and these people... Over these 20 years, so it'll be this June since I started this work, have made a sacrifice that we could be comfortable in our worship. They were willing to sell, some of them, almost everything they had to build for the glory of God, to win souls of the kingdom of God. And some of you have gotten saved here. Many of you have. Again, the kingdom of God is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls, who when he had found one pearl of great price, he went and sold all that he had, and he bought it. Do you not see the value of the kingdom of God? You say, well, I don't see the need to give to the kingdom. I just want you just to... Look at these scripture verses that I'm going to show you here this morning. Amen. Because there's a reason why you at this point may not see the value of the kingdom of God. Amen. And the reason may be is that we don't see the kingdom as it is. Look at that word see. We may not see the kingdom as it is. That it is worthy for us to sell all that we have and pursue it. 
to stay in Jacksonville. Ha! Hold on. You know, God told me to stay in Jacksonville, so I automatically know that he asked people to stay here. <laughs> and you can try to get away, but you'll be back here. <laughs> I have to be careful because we have a brother who's leaving today. <laughs> and I'm not speaking to him, okay? Hallelujah. But do you understand, we may not see the kingdom as it is. John... 3, 3 says, Jesus answered said to them, Verily I say unto you, except a man be born again. Listen, you have to be born again. He cannot see the kingdom of God. He can't see the value of the kingdom of God. You have to be born again to see the value of what the church does. What its mission is. And what the intent of the heart of God is for us. We may not need, we may need to go back and examine why we do not see the value of sacrificing for the kingdom. Christ thought it was so valuable, the kingdom, that he gave his life to establish it. The fact that we do not see the value of the kingdom of God to sacrifice as believers really should frighten us. It's kind of like, have you ever thought about what would happen if that day that you accepted Jesus, if you never would have accepted him? Doesn't that kind of frighten you? It does me. I think about that often, and so it just drives me to my knees and say, thank you, Lord. I don't know where I got that wisdom to go to church that night, but I thank you. Because it is given unto you, the believer, Jesus says, to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Now watch this. But to them that don't see the value of the kingdom, it is not given. It is not a revelation unto them. I have not illuminated the truth about this kingdom to them. But it is given unto you, the believer who's accepted Jesus Christ, to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Are you with me? I'm going to repeat this again. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. My friend, you may not see the value of the church. And, and that it's like the Old Testament tabernacle. When you first looked at it on the outside, it had old badger skins on the outside. In the Old Testament tabernacle in the wilderness. But on the inside of that little tabernacle, it was laid with gold. And the posts were made out of silver caps you know it was beautiful on the inside where the presence of God was so you may not see the outside of the external or the physical side of the of these buildings are just buildings but really on the inside is the glory of God and the presence of God who's trying to do a good work of faith in us and save us come on and grow us not for this life but for the next life Amen. So we need to go back and examine why we do not see the value of the sacrifice of the king. Because Christ gave his life for this. He established the churches. It's imperfect. And he knows it's imperfect. But he designed it this way. But he gave us a warning about entertaining the world. And Jesus said unto them, No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back at the world, is fit. Now, I love this word fit. It means can't be used, not ready to be used for the kingdom of God. Listen, you can't be in the church and look back at the world. You can't do that. Jesus said, no man having put his hand to the plow to want to work for the kingdom of God and begins to look back at the world can be used by God because the world is going to draw you back. Amen? Now I'm going to talk about parables. And if you don't do anything today, read uh, the Matthew, the 13th chapter. There are a bunch of parables in there because they teach us about the kingdom and they teach us about the promises and priorities and all these positions and, and principles. But I want to show you something here. 
And I want you to understand this, is that Adam lost the kingdom in the garden. I think we understand that. And Jesus came to the earth to win it back. And Satan knew that's what he came to do. But Satan had authority. He is the king of this world. The God of this world has blinded the unsaved to the glorious gospel of Christ. He has authority. And he talks to Jesus and he tells him about the authority that he has in this kingdom here on this earth. So I want you to watch his tactics he's going to use against Jesus. And there's no respecter of person with this guy. He's a devourer. He, he'll use him against us as well. And the devil taking him up unto a high mountain showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, all this power will I give thee. He had the right to give it to Jesus. And the glory of this kingdom, Jesus, I know you came here to win it back, but I'm going to give you an opportunity that you're not going to have to shed any blood. You're not going to have to be embarrassed. You're not going to be slapped. No thorns put upon you. You're not going to have to be crucified. He said, all this power will I give thee and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me. He has it. You know that, that God the Father gave it to me. When Adam forfeited, it belongs to me. You've come here to get it, but I'm willing to give it to you. If thou wilt worship me. You don't think that Satan offers us the same way to break the plans of God that he has for us. It is the will of God that we suffer like the master. That we be afflicted. Amen? And we don't like it. Amen? But see, Jesus understood that and he understood what he was doing. He, he had Jesus looking at the world a different way. Than the way that Father God had Jesus looking at him. Satan wants us to look at the world the same way. But you've got to rely upon God that we look at the world. It's all about souls. Come on. It's not about these riches. It's not about authority and power. It's all about Father God sending His Son before the very foundation of the earth. Amen? Before He even laid the foundation as He told Job, Job, where were you when I stretched forth the heavens? Amen? You want creation? You want evolution? You want a big bang? Listen to what Job said. Where were you, Job, when I did all of this? There was an expansion. God stretched it out. Amen? There was a big bang. I'm just asking this morning, have we sold ourselves out when we worship the world and not willing to sacrifice for the kingdom and win others to Christ? And that really is a challenge this morning for you, and only you can answer that, because there is a balance in all of this. Because God is asking us to choose. Choose this day who you will serve. For you cannot love two masters, for you will love one and hate the other. You say, I love Christ, and you must not love the world. So why is it that the unsaved and some of the Christians do not see the value of the kingdom and are not willing to sacrifice for it? The answer is darkness. See, I tried to tell you a couple of weeks back, this is why you need to come faithfully because these guys and myself, we work hard to give you this message. And we've given you this message already is that there is an influence in our life every single day. There's an influence right now in your life trying to get you not to hear what the Holy Spirit is trying to talk to you. He's trying to blind you to the glorious gospel of Christ and the message. Amen? There's darkness. And if you don't see it, it's because the God of this world has blinded us. And He continues to influence us and, and pull us away from God. But what we don't understand is every time we sin, and we've talked about this, that every time that we, we sin, we fall deeper into darkness, and you don't see it. But spiritually, you're becoming blinder and blinder. Is that a word? Is that a word? Thanks. One guy answered me. Hallelujah. I can be like Archie Bunker sometimes with words. 
But you need to understand there is something happening to us every single time that we sin, every time that we lie, every time that our tongue is split and we're talking about people because the Word of God says that you should not share your neighbor's secrets with another. Oh, boy. Amen? But we don't know, and that's why you need to learn about iniquity. And you'll learn that if you stay here for any period of time, is that every time we sin, we become twisted and distorted. And we can't see that we are created in the image of God. is because we're so twisted and ugly and living in darkness. But every time we become obedient to a scripture or the kingdom principles of God, I'm just telling you, God will straighten you up. God will open your eyes and you'll see the value of everything that's in the Word of God. Everything. To love your brother and to show mercy to those who don't deserve mercy. You'll see the value of it because every time that you do it, there is something happening to you. You're straightening up. God's opening up our eyes. Whew. Light is coming to the world and men love darkness rather than the light. Listen, you got to fight that darkness in your life, guys. He's pulling you away from God. Some of you have come to God, and He's still trying to tug on you because you keep looking back. And every time you turn your back and look back into the world, you've turned your back on your destiny with God. You have to stay focused with God and the ministry that God has given us. He's given us all a ministry of reconciliation that we would win souls to the kingdom of God. We all have a ministry. So the truth is, many think they're in the kingdom of God when they are not. Now, I'm only going to preach for about five more minutes now. Listen to me. Amen. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, Jesus, Jesus shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Well, who will then enter? But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. How do I know if I'm in the kingdom? Come on. Here's something to think about. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom, and that's what you're doing today, they hear about the kingdom, they, they listen to these sermons about the kingdom, and, and maybe Bible studies and that, and they understand it not. They don't get a spiritual revolution, revelation of truth. Now, I want you to listen to me. If you don't get this this morning, there's a problem. Because if you're listening to me, that's the number one problem. You should be listening to the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit has a language of His own, and He speaks the Word of God. If you don't know the Word of God, He can't speak to you in your situation. He can't help you in your situation because He speaks with the Word of God. When Satan came at Jesus, Jesus quoted the Word of God. It is written, I shall worship the Lord thy God and only him. That's how you're going to defeat Satan. But when people hear about the kingdom of God and they don't understand it, okay, watch what happens why people don't comprehend the truth of this message, amen? And even about the value of the kingdom because it tells us in verse 19, then cometh the wicked one. And catch it away. He's trying to get it from you even right now. Takes by force because the person is not strong enough to resist or he doesn't know the word of God. Amen. That's embedded in his heart. You can quote the word of God. But quoting the word of God is not going to help you if it's not in your very soul and who you are. We just did Christmas. When the three wise men came to King Herod, we're looking for the king. Herod turned and looked at the scribes and he said, Where is this Messiah to be born? And they said, Micah, the fifth chapter, verse 2, says Bethlehem. And so the wise men left and went to Bethlehem. And found Jesus. But did King Herod go? Did the religious go? No. 
I'm trying to tell you, just because you know the Word of God doesn't mean that you're going to respond to the Word of God. You have to take the Word of God and embed it in your heart. God says, take thy Word and hide it in my heart that I might not sin against thee, God. That's the only way that you're going to not sin against God is to take that word, that memory of that word and place it in your heart and meditate upon it because it's doing something to us. But he that receiveth the seed, he hears about the kingdom in the stony places, the same as he that heareth the word and with joy receiveth. There are people who hear about salvation. There are people who hear even about the kingdom of God. And they hear it and you may be here today. And it's all with great joy that you listen to this. And you receive this. Yet it doesn't take root. And so for a while, they appear to be changed and even excited about the kingdom of God. For a while anyway. I've seen it in the church. You've seen it in the church since we've started. We have people saved and then walk themselves out and don't even go to church today. They're their own God. Because the word didn't take root. You've got to let the word do what it's got to do to us. Amen. Because only by the word of God can there be change. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Amen. You've got to let the word of God speak to you so it can bring a change about you. You can't just hold on to it and be excited about it. You've got to let it do whatever work it's got to do. If it's got to trim us up, let it trim us up. But when it came, because of tribulation or persecution, it says when it came to choose who they would serve because of the word, when there was battle or conflict within, by and by he's offended. His enthusiasm for the kingdom and the things of God fade, and he begins to stumble and he begins to fall away. Listen, God is telling us how to backslide and why people backslide. Verse 22, I thought you were going to end. I'm getting close. He also that receiveth seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the cares of the word, the lure of this world. And listen, you can't get on that computer and don't, don't even tell me you're not lured. I got every block there is on my computer. And that thing is, hey, I don't know, they think I'm over 50. Hey, you looking for somebody over 50? No, I'm over 60 here. I mean, they're trying to lure all of us. They're trying to lure our little kids. Don't let your children on their computer unless they're sitting right beside you. Is that too difficult? No, it's not difficult. It's going to consume your time, but you're going to protect your children who God gave you. But the care of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word of God out of us. The word says drowns. That's what choke means, the word. And then they become unfruitful. So what is a sign that someone may know about the kingdom but is not in the kingdom? The question is, are people fruitful for God? Do something. You don't all have to preach. But you do have to witness. Do something. Serve in the back. Do something. That's how I got started. Really, that's how you grow. Amen? Man, I ended up taking care of Royal Rangers. I didn't want it. To be honest with you, kind of like got stuck on me. The, the guy said, hey, come help me for one Sunday. And next thing I know, he said, hey, he had orders Okinawa, and I was in charge. Next thing you know, I was camping with these little boogers, man, and they were burning my tent and throwing my thermometer in the fire. And whew. Parents were complaining about me. Man. But here I am. I survived all of that. I got offended. But I grew up because of that. I realized that that was a tactic that the enemy used against me. Little did I know that he was going to call me to preach. Ooh, that's what I say. <laughs> so the sign that someone knows about the kingdom but he's not in the kingdom is if they're unfruitful. Listen to me. Listen to me. 
Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. You're either a sheep or a goat. And if you are a sheep of God, he's speaking to some of you today, right now, and saying you're walking the line. So what is the sign to, that one is in the kingdom? Ah, but he that receiveth the seed into a good ground, a good heart, amen. Is he that heareth the word, he gives audience to it, he understands, he comprehends, and is made aware of the kingdom of spiritual truths, which also beareth fruit. So he goes out and he produces. And not only does he produce, but he's 30-fold and 60-fold and 100-fold. That's how you know you're in the kingdom when you're fruitful, when you're witnessing, when you win souls of the kingdom of God. Don't you understand that there is a glory about winning souls of the kingdom of God? The Bible says that the man that wins souls of the kingdom of God will shine like the stars for all eternity. I don't know how that's going to work. But when you win souls of the kingdom of God, God wants the world to know the, what you've done for him. And he's going to cause us to shine like the stars for all eternity. So in closing, but when I, the Messiah, shall come, and he is coming, and all the angels with me, then I shall sit upon my throne. God has a throne, and all the nations shall be gathered with me, and I will separate the people as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, and place the sheep at my right hand and the goats at my left. And then I, the king, and we have a king. We'll talk about the king. We'll talk about it's not a democracy, amen, in the church. It's a monarchy. We have a king, amen. We'll talk about that. Then I, the king, shall say to those at my right, come blessed of my father into the kingdom, prepare for you from the founding of the world. God meant for this to happen. Long before, as I said to you, before he laid the very foundation of this world, he already had these plans about the kingdom. That is why I use these parables, he said. You love the Lord. Would you bow your head with me? Did you learn anything today? Amen. How many of you are going to go out of here different than the way that you came in this morning? Let me see your hands. God bless you. Thank you this morning. You may put them down. How many of you see the value of the kingdom of God now? Let me see your hands. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Maybe there's somebody here in the sound of my voice. My friend, you've never accepted Jesus Christ for the Lord of your life. But you want to go to heaven. Well, God ordained and sanctified and set you apart that you were going to be here today to listen to this message that God loves you. He has plans for you. But you can't get into the kingdom unless you're born again. That simply means that you have to accept Jesus as the Lord of your life. You say, well, Pastor, I don't know how to do that. Well, I want you to repeat after me, which I'm going to quote a scripture verse about salvation. I want you to say this from your heart. And that is Jesus, right where you're at in your seat. Just say, Jesus, today I recognize that I am a sinner and I'm in need of a Savior and I believe Jesus is the Savior and so I confess my sins and ask for forgiveness I ask you to come into my heart Jesus and be my Lord and my Savior I believe you died and you resurrected that I might be resurrected into new life today. So I accept you, Jesus, as my Savior and believe that I am now saved, 
that my name, a new name, is written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. My friend, if you prayed that prayer with you, we have a little booklet while the saints are praying for you. I want to give you this little book. It's a little purple book. It's going to teach you about the kingdom principles of God. It's going to help you grow. There's no other way to grow. There's no other way to get faith except by the Word of God. And I want to give you this little book. You don't have to do anything but put up your hand. If you prayed that prayer this morning and you accepted Jesus and you want this little book, we want to give it to you. The ushers are in the back. All they'll do is come to you and just give you this little book. Anybody here, you accepted Jesus this morning. I just want you to put up your hand if you want that book. Anybody here? every head is bowed I want to challenge the saints maybe there's somebody here you say Pastor Kobe I've been walking that line and I thank you that you're challenging me right now because I've got to make a decision who I'm going to serve and for me and my family we're going to serve the Lord there anybody here you say Pastor Kobe you talk to me this morning. Anybody put up your hand right where you're at. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody else? Listen. Look up here for a second. Don't be ashamed to raise your hand. It's already in your heart. God sees it. But everyone that God called, He called them publicly. There must be a reason for that. And that's why we do what we do. So I want to encourage you. Don't be afraid to put your hand up. You're in the house of God. And none of us here are perfect. Amen. Now we may take this word today and... Yeah, it's always for us, and maybe not so much today, but maybe next week it's going to get us. But it was for you today. You take all that God has for you. Amen.